Welcome to the Askeville Assembly of God Sermon Podcast. We're so glad you've taken the time to listen, and we pray this message from our pastors will be a blessing on your life this week. If you have your Bibles, I want you to go to Luke chapter 18. Today we're going to talk about the blind man. Luke is trying to get our minds to understand that Jesus came for all kinds of people. There wasn't a certain type he liked, a certain type that he was looking for. He came for all kinds. We talked last week about the rich young ruler. Today we're going to talk about the blind beggar. Jesus was no respecter of persons and he still isn't today. You may come in here today and you think you're out of place. You're right where God wants you to be. And he came for you and died on the cross for you just like he died for any one of us. He loves you where you are. He loves you as you are. And loves you too much to leave you there. He can love you into a better life. Luke came to show us that. The purpose of Luke. Remember, Luke was a physician. He was a doctor. He was also a pretty pretty good poet. We have all the songs because of Luke. Luke also was probably the most historically based, like knowing how things are lined up during that time. But Luke wanted us to understand four things through his gospel. Number one, that the good news was for all people. Number two, that he came to seek and save the lost. Number three, that he was the perfect universal, I'm doing this out of order, the perfect universal man. That's the first one, but anyway. And then lastly, that Luke wanted us to know that we needed the empowerment of the Holy Spirit to see all these things come to pass. I just want to tell you for a second, I am so thankful to God that I have a church empowered by the Holy Spirit that I grew up at what people, most people dream for. Those people who come to this church and they say, man, those people are crazy. I grew up in it. The crazy's normal to me. <laughs> you know what's crazy to me is to go to a dead church your whole life. That's pretty crazy to me. I'm so thankful to God for the heritage of our church. That you got such good musicians in this place that if Heather gets a wild hair, we'll just follow her. (laughs) Luke's purpose was to remind us that it was good news for all people. But we also find in the scripture about Jesus' purpose on on this earth. And we're starting our Christmas series, Good News for All People. It comes from Luke chapter 2. The angels came and told the shepherds that this would be good news for all people. Jesus is on his way to Jerusalem. He may have been the only baby ever born for the purpose of death. Jesus was born, and his ultimate mission was to die for us. And I got to tell you, I'm so thankful that God did not give me a child with the mission of death. This is what Simeon was talking about when he said that it will pierce your soul. He was talking about that your baby is destined for death, but not forever. He's also destined for resurrection. We come to this story and we come upon Jericho. Blind Bartimaeus in chapter 18 of Luke, he's, Jesus is coming to Jericho. Jericho is about 17 miles outside of Jerusalem. You don't have to go through Jericho. We're going to talk about it next week. Jesus had to go through Jericho. It wasn't the road Jesus had a mission he was going to fulfill. Today, we're going to talk about a blind beggar. Next week, we're going to talk about a rich tax collector. But Jesus te- Luke tells us the mission of Jesus in chapter 4. The day he stood at Nazareth. Then he came, uh, Luke 4, verse 18, uh, verse 16. And he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And as was his custom, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day and he stood up to read and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written in Isaiah chapter 35, verse 5. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives and the recovering of sight to the blind and the recovering of sight to the blind and to see Set at liberty those who are oppressed to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. 
Luke chapter 7 talks about John the Baptist's boys coming and saying, are you the one or should we look for another? And Jesus refers in Luke 7, 22, he says, and he's answered them, go and tell John what you've seen and heard. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised up, the poor have good news preached to them. Blessed is the one who is not offended by me. The blind received their sight. The blind received their sight. This was a sign that Jesus was Messiah, that the blind would receive their sight. Luke chapter 18, starting in verse 35. As he drew near to Jericho, a blind man was sitting by the roadside begging. And hearing a crowd going by, he inquired what this meant. They told him, Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. And he cried out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And those who were in front rebuked him, telling him to be silent. But he cried out all the more, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stopped and commanded him to be brought to him. And when he came near... Jesus asked him, what do you want me to do for you? What do you want me to do for you? I'm going to stop here for just a second. Have you ever thought about these moments when Jesus comes to somebody and says, what do you want me to do for you? Have you ever read that and thought to yourself, duh? The man is blind. Of course he wants his sight. Have you ever thought that? Have you ever, anybody in this room ever read the scripture and had that much attitude when you read it? I read it all the time this way. I look at it and I'm just like, Jesus, what are you, this is a dumb question. Just get to the point. In fact, if, even if this did happen, why in the world would Luke feel the need to write about it? But it's because it's very important. You see, if we go around trying to fix for other people what they don't want fixed, we're just going to get in a lot of trouble. In fact, we go around and start praying for people the opposite of what they're praying, they ain't going to be happy about it. This man is a blind beggar. If a man screams out and wants to get the attention of this crowd, there's a good chance that this guy is seeking not sight but money Jesus had met far too many people that would rather keep their sicknesses because it made them money than those who wanted to be healed every Pharisee he found they wanted more knowledge they did not want healing they did not want truth they did not want to know who the father was he came across people over and over and over again who'd rather keep their malady than to be set free. There's some people in your family that are that way. You know what would fix them. And they know. You know. So stop telling them. Because until they're ready to receive, they're not going to. Jesus comes to this blind man and he says, What would you have me do for you? Can you imagine how horrible? The story wouldn't have made it in the Bible if this is the way it went, but he would have said $5 would be good. I just eat a cheeseburger. How many of y'all know some beggars? Come on. Have we wore you out already? Man, there was a time I couldn't even walk through Food Line in Windsor without somebody coming and being like, let me hold $2. That's why I only care plastic. I ain't got two dollars for you to hold, pal. Well, that's not generous. Hey, (laughs) silver and gold have I none, but what I do have, I give to thee. Blessings in the name of Jesus. (laughs) How many of us have encountered people that that they their their sickness has become their pet? It's become the excuse for everything in their life. Oh, I was starting to do better in my life, but then when that thing took place, I just haven't been able to get my life back together. And we allow the, the, the problems in our life to become the crutch, and it becomes more of a pet than anything else. I'd rather keep my blindness because if I am able to see correctly, I might have to do something different. 
Now, here's the thing. He cries out, Son of David. He doesn't say Jesus. They said it was Jesus. Son of, he said Jesus of Nazareth. His response was, Jesus, Son of David. Son of David is a, is a messiahship thing. He says, you're king. You're the king that we've been waiting for to come from the Davidic line. Uh, and God had told David in 2 Samuel chapter 7 that when your days are fulfilled and you lie down with your fathers, I will rise up, I will raise up from your offspring after you, one who shall come from your body and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build a house for my name and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. They knew about the Davidic covenant and here's this man who hears of Jesus from Nazareth, not Bethlehem, Jesus from Nazareth, he puts two and two together and he says, you are the king we've been waiting for. Jesus, Jesus. And then the crowd said, hush your mouth, you blind beggar. He's got things worth saying. And what did it say? And he kept on. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. I can tell you right now, if you ever go to Jesus and try to explain to him why you deserve something, you might not have his ear. But when you go and cry, God, have mercy on me, he'll shut the whole crowd down to hear you. The posture of this blind man changed Jesus' opinion. He said, who is it calling out? Bring him to me. What do you want from me? And he said, I want to see. Do you know what's so crazy? This blind man saw better than anybody else in that crowd. He could see clearly that Jesus was the Messiah. I'm thankful to God for people who saw clearly. Even in this world, we only see partially. I think about Brother Roy. He was a man who saw clearly. He was one of those kind men that you would never know he struggled with anything. Unless you were family, maybe y'all did. But as a, as a pastor... I got to stand on the altar when he came up to me and asked me to lay hands on him and pray for some of the things in his life. He walked around like he walked on clouds and yet he struggled just like I struggled. Some of you in this place, you think you're the only person going through something. Wah. We are all struggling. Some of us are easier at talking about it than others. You'd be amazed at the people with the most amount of faith are the ones who've had the hardest road. The people with the most amount of grace are the people who've had the hardest uphill battle. Now, I'm not saying that to shame you. If you need prayer, ask for prayer. Please do. What I'm saying to you today is, as Paul said, all of us, that there's none of us going through anything that is not <laughs> available to all of us. All of us have our different frustrations. We should pray to Jesus. We should lay our burdens upon one another. We should be encouraged when we need it. The thing is, if the body was building itself up in love, when you're going through something, I can encourage you. And then when I go through something, you can encourage me. Something Miss Cheryl used to say all the time. She would say, uh, I'm going to butcher it and she can fix it. But um, share a hurt, half a hurt. Share a joy, twice the joy. Is that close? <laughs> All right, don't quote her on that. Quote me on that one because I, I, I probably butchered it. Get the real one from her. We need each other. Scripture says, weep with those who weep, laugh with those who laugh. We need each other. What do you want me to do? He said, Lord, let me recover my sight, he said. And Jesus said to him, recover your sight. Your faith has made you well. Another way of saying that is you are saved. Salvation has come to you. Because of your faith, you are saved. And Jesus said to him, recover your sight. Your faith has made you well. And immediately he recovered his sight and followed him. And glorifying God and all the people, with they, when they saw it, when they saw it. <laughs> Could you hear that? He recovered his sight. And when the crowd saw it. They weren't blind, do you see? They weren't the ones blind. But when they saw it, everybody glorified God. I personally think the blind man already had faith in Jesus, therefore he already had salvation. But the reason he called out to Jesus is he wanted to meet his master. Whether or not he gained his sight was not important. But by gaining his sight, the rest of the crowd glorified God. I, that's cool. I'm just telling you. 
When I pray, that's the way I pray. God, don't do it for me. Do it for everybody else I'll tell about it. I wanted this to be a testimony, God. I want to be able to declare about the goodness of who you are. I want to show off your power, God. I'm not asking it for me. Look, I'm, I'm in. I'm going to follow you the rest of my days. There's nothing you can do to get rid of me. Romans tells me that. I'm following you. But if you were to move on my behalf, I could testify about your great power. That's what happens. And all the people, when they saw it, gave glory unto God. In chapter 18, we talked about the widow that got discouraged by the indifferent judge. We talked about the publican that got discouraged because of the hypocritical Pharisee. We talked about the parents who were cast away by the apostles and told, don't bring your children to the king. And Jesus said, bring those kids right on to me. Then we talked about, now we've talked about the blind man who was told by the crowd, hush your mouth, and he pressed through. I'm telling you right now, chapter 18 is about pressing through. No matter what it is that is in your way, who's telling you to stop, who Who's in the way of you getting your miracle? When Jesus moves upon you, press in. Seize your moment right there. Do not give it another chance. When the Lord moves upon your heart, you receive it in that moment. Receive the peace, the joy, the love, the goodness. Your miracle may only take place in a certain moment. And if you wait for the next time, there may never be a next time. The crowd said, hush your mouth. And he said all the more, son of David, have mercy on me. Remember the publican. Remember the Pharisee and the publican. The publican said, is there a mercy seat for me? The blind man, though he couldn't see anything, he just heard a crowd. He knew Jesus was the mercy seat that he needed. Son of David, have mercy on me. Don't let anyone keep you from Jesus. Even if it's a preacher, even if it's a praying grandma, especially if it's an atheist. Don't let nobody, well, they're the ones who signed my check. Let them sign the check and just you follow Jesus. Well, I hitched my wagon to this one. I mean, he's my spouse. Okay, I'm telling you, whatever the Lord says to you, you better care more about what the Lord says. And if they fear God, your spouse that is, they'll let you. Seize your moment. Son of David, have mercy. Jesus says, what do you want from me? Well, duh. Salvation from the blind man. Miracle was for the people. Here's, here's, I got two more words for you. One more. It said that after blind Bartimaeus was healed... Then he followed Jesus. Do you remember what that's what the rich young ruler wanted? The rich young ruler was like, what do I have to do to you know, get eternal life or whatever? Jesus said, go sell everything, give it to the poor, and then follow me. And he went away sorrowful. But here's blind Bartimaeus, blind beggar. He has nothing to offer Jesus. He has no vision, and he has no money, and yet he follows Jesus. But something I'd never heard, and I, I'm, I hate to use that song, it's so the, but... That, the, that song, I remember singing it, and I thought, what a quick turn. He says, I followed him from day to day across the dusty trail. I saw him heal the lame, the sick, and even raise the dead. I saw him go to Calvary and die upon the tree. I heard that, and I used to think to myself, man, that's a quick turn. Like, let's spend a whole verse on miracles, and then let's talk about the cross. But the truth was, Jericho was only 17 miles, which means blind Bartimaeus followed Jesus the rest of his days. And those days may have been about two or three weeks. It was a fast turnaround. He didn't get to follow Jesus up into Galilee. He followed Jesus 17 miles and watched Jesus die on the cross. If he had not have seized his moment, he would have never received his miracle. If he would have waited for the next time Jesus comes through, he would have never received his miracle. Some of us are waiting for the next time, the next service. Lord, I'll, I'll, I'll come to you the next time. I'll, I'll really enter in next time. I, I want to raise my hands, but I'm not going to raise my hand. I'll, I'll raise it next time. The next worship night, I'll really, let you, I'll really let you have all of me. The next mission trip, I'll really let you have all of me. The, the next Thanksgiving dinner, I'll really say what you've called me to say. The, the next time, you better seize your moment because you're not promised the next time. The blind beggar got to watch the Son of God die on the cross. Watch it with his actual eyes because he seized his moment. He followed Jesus straight to Calvary and watched him die on the cross. 
Can you imagine? Years he'd been blind. And one of the, one of the very first experiences he has is in, the, in like a month, baby, is he watches the Son of God die on the cross. The blind man could clearly see that Jesus is Messiah. So this is my closing. Because we're going to have some altar call time. Not altar call. It's going to be... It's going to be good. Don't, don't get nervous. Someone had to have told Bartimaeus about Jesus. Bartimaeus about Jesus. This blind man in Jericho. Jericho to this day is one of the most non-Jewish places in all of Israel. It's always been that way. Very Canaan, very pagan. In fact... The new city, Jericho, where, where the blind man was sitting right outside of was kind of like Israel's Las Vegas. Someone took the time to tell Bartimaeus about the Son of God. Now, it was his job to believe, but somebody had to tell him. Who told you? Who took the time to tell you? Romans chapter 10, verse 17 says, So faith comes from hearing, and hearing through the word of God. Some of you in this room are thinking, if they, if they could just get a hold of Jesus, but who's going to tell them? If faith comes by hearing, how will they hear if someone doesn't go? How can they hear if someone doesn't say it? But Webb, you don't understand the reputation, the relationship. You don't understand they're going to they're hate me. They're not going to like Hey, seize your moment. I'd rather them get mad at me and I see them in heaven than for me to keep waiting for a better time and lose it all. Do you believe Jesus can change people's circumstances? Let me ask you. Do you believe Jesus can change your circumstances? So this is what I want us to do today. I want, us to, I want us to huddle up. I want us to huddle. I want you to turn your chairs around. This is a cool thing about not having pews. I want y'all to huddle up together. I want y'all to turn around. I don't care. Somewhere between 2 and 50 in a circle, okay? It, probably, probably 10 would probably be a good number. But I really do. I want y'all to huddle up. I want you to circle up. We got plenty of time this morning. But I want you to take time and I want you to, I want you to ask this question. What would... What would you have Jesus do for you? What do you want Jesus to do? The next thing I want you to do, I want you to take a minute and testify. Somebody told Bartimaeus about how good Jesus was. I want you to tell him, I want you to tell each other in your circles, testify. Has a miracle taken place for you this year? Has God moved upon you in a powerful way? Have you seen some change in somebody you've been praying for? I want you to test a moment, take a moment and testify with one another praising him as it said all people praise because of the miracle it encourages others when we hear that God's done something would you take a minute and just testify if you're already done with the the other part go ahead the last thing I wanted to mention to you before you leave is the reason blind Bartimaeus's life was changed is because someone took the time to tell a blind man about the man who could change everything I don't think it's too much for us to consider in this Christmas season who needs to hear about the son of David who is able to change everything. Some of you in this room, you know somebody that needs to hear this story. They need to hear your story. I want to tell the world about my story, but it starts at one person at the time. The salvation of Christ changed my life forever, and I know some people who need a change in theirs. And so I'm going to tell them about the man I know who can change everything. Thank you for joining the Askeville Assembly of God Sermon Podcast. For more information on our ministry, please visit our website at askevilleassembly.com.